Hey everyone, it's Searsha, aka Story. I'm a 2018 Appalachian Trail through hiker, but today I want to talk about the Long Trail of Vermont. Welcome to Vermont. So after I finished hiking the AT, I really craved physical activity. I took up running, it just wasn't the same, so I started to plan a hike for the next year, 2019 and I remembered really loving Vermont. It was one of my favorite places on the AT. I think it's so beautiful, the scenery is incredible. So it seemed kind of perfect to go back and do the LT, especially because it shares 100 miles with the AT, so I repeated those miles. So it's much shorter than the AT, it's about 270 miles, and I think there's some saying, and I'm probably gonna get this wrong, but it's like Vermont is 90 miles wide and three weeks long, something like that, because it takes about three weeks to do the LT. So it's not going to take you six months. It's not like a massive long through hike, but it is a hard hike and it's still long. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about some things that you might want to think about before you take on the long trail. And as always, hike your own hike. My advice isn't going to work for everybody. My advice sometimes doesn't even work for me. So. Take everything with a grain of salt. I would take about three to four weeks to hike the LT. Just give yourself some buffer time. And I know that's hard if you are trying to plan flights. That's very hard. But if you don't know that you can do at least 14 miles a day, then I would say give yourself a little more than three weeks. I did it in 20 days. I set out on June 1st, finished on June 20th, and I really <laughs> pushed myself because I needed to be back by my mom's birthday. So if you have a, a goal like that to get yourself to hike faster, fine, but if you really want to stop and enjoy yourself along the way and take it slow, take it easy, because some of the trail is very difficult, then you're going to want to have between three and four weeks. Give yourself a vague plan for at least or resupplies at least and this is totally dependent on what kind of hiker you are I set out with <laughs> 10 days of food in my pack I think um, because I wasn't really sure about where I wanted to resupply and um, you know by now if you've watched my other videos I don't like to prepare a lot in advance sue me but I kind of like things to be a little bit chaotic but if you're if you're not like that and you want to plan ahead then look at what towns are along the LT and make sure you've got at least four resupplies in there and even more than that if you want to be comfortable because you don't always want to carry a ton of food and I ended up resupplying like every two or three days by the end of it once I met my trail family and we were hitching into town all the time because we didn't want to carry a lot of food if you want to get recognition from the GMC for having hiked the long trail, then you're going to have to keep a journal. So I kept my journal on my phone and that way it was very easy for me to put it on my computer, edit it, because a journal is pretty personal. Um, I write everything that happens on the trail and everything that I'm thinking, so I wasn't going to send that to the GMC. So I edited it and, you know, took out some personal details and then I sent it off and that is proof that you hiked the trail. So it's, I mean, it's kind of the honor system because you could fake it, but um, they're assuming that you are actually being honest when you write it. And so when you do that, then they send you a very exciting patch. You get this one and the end-to-end -end one. So if you've done the AT, it's like the, the AT patch and then the 2000 miler patch, but it's, you're called an end-to-ender. I mean, I guess you could call yourself a through hiker too, but um, I think typically it's end to ender. When you start the trail, there are a few paths you can take. There are a few trails to get to the beginning because the border of Massachusetts and Vermont is in the middle of the woods. Of course it is. So the long trail does not start at a trailhead at a road where you can park. So you're going to have to take some trail to get to the long trail. Now I started at Pine Cobble Trail and this was the easiest thing for me to do. I, I did some research and that just seemed like the quickest and easiest way. So I think I flew into Albany and I took an Uber to a Walmart and got my first supply of food and then I took an Uber to Pine Cobble Trailhead. 
and from there I started and I think it's three or four, probably around four miles to the start of the LT. And it's all uphill, you know, because of course the border has to be on the top of something. So yeah, that was a pretty easy way, but I know other hikers who took different routes to get to the beginning of the LT. You're going to want to arrange for a ride out at the end. So when you finish, just as when you start, the finish is in the middle of the woods. Um, and then you're going to keep going down and get to a road and you're not going to be super close to anything. So it is smart to have an exit strategy when you get to the end of the long trail. Now this is assuming that you are going um, south to north. If you're going north to south, I, um, I did not do it that way, so just reverse it. Um, you can take Pine Cobble Trail out and you can arrange for a ride into the beginning slash end. Um, but I finished in the north at the border of Canada and then luckily my trail family knew somebody and they were able to give us a ride out. We all know people love to talk about Vermud on the AT. It was, it was talked about all the time. Like people hated hiking in the mud in Vermont. I didn't mind it. I kind of liked it because the trail, any trail, can be pretty rough on your feet, especially if there's a lot of rocks, but mud is really soft and, and sweet and forgiving. It's messy, but um, it's nice on your feet. It's gentle. But watch out for the mud if you're going around the time I did, which was the very beginning of hiking season, June 1st. They didn't really want people starting before that because the mud is pretty bad. Um, so if you are going then, I will just say watch your poles in the mud because I used my trekking poles from the AT and they were already pretty battered. They'd been through over 2,000 miles. And one day I looked down at the end of the day and, and half of my pole was gone. It had been sucked out by the mud, the part where the pole extends in the middle. It had just been sucked out and it was gone. Um, and I didn't notice until it was too late and I couldn't get the, the half of my pole back. So watch that mud, it can be really sneaky. If you are hiking at the same time as me, you're going to want a bug net for your head. Don't forget this, it's gonna be essential. If you're out there in June, oh, the black flies. The black flies are so brutal. And if you're hiking really fast, then there's a lot of wind and they can't really keep up with you and they can't land on you and bite you. But you know how it is with hiking, sometimes you're going slow. And um, there were a lot of times when I was going slow. I'm not a particularly fast uphill hiker. So there's nothing worse than being covered in black flies, hiking uphill um, on a very strenuous mountain and sweating. Um, and the black flies are just chewing your skin off. So you're gonna want a bug net, especially for like breaks. If you wanna sit down and just catch your breath sometimes, you can't enjoy that or um, or really get any rest if the black flies are attacking you and in the second you stop they'll attack you. But this is not true for other seasons which I'll talk about but when I was there in June absolutely black flies are a big deal. So have bug spray they seem to love it they just want to lick it off your body so yeah bug nets your best bet. Go to the tops of fire towers so I know how it is, I know. When you're hiking, it seems like a huge inconvenience and extra effort to climb to the top of a fire tower when you just climbed a mountain. But let me tell you, the views are so worth it. And this is only a three to four week trip. Just do it, go to the tops of the fire towers and take the side trail on Killington because it's like 0.2 to the top of the actual mountain and the LT doesn't go to the top, so take the side trail to the top of this mountain, you're gonna wanna see the view. You know, it's not that much of an extra effort and I just really recommend it. Vermont is so, so incredibly beautiful. Remember, it gets tougher in the north. And this is something that was hard to understand because when I did the AT, I did the, you know, first 100 miles of the LT. That's where they are, they are the same trail. And it's, it was so pleasant, still difficult, absolutely still difficult, but it was pleasant and it wasn't, like, it wasn't the hardest part of the AT. I just really enjoyed myself. So I thought the LT will be perfect for me. It'll be the right balance of challenge and enough ease to really enjoy it. 
but it is true what they say. It does get harder in the north. So after the AT and the LT split, the LT gets a lot rougher and it becomes, a lot of people told me it'll become like the whites um, in New Hampshire. And I just couldn't believe that when I heard it. And I still think the whites are harder than the LT, than what happens in the north. But it is kind of similar in that there are a few exposed peaks. There's gonna be spots above tree line where there's some scrambly bits. Um, it's probably nothing you can't handle. If you're thinking about taking on the LT, I think you can handle it. Just um, be careful. Be careful, that applies to any hike. Um, oh, I've got my cat here. Please, no more cold. I have done my time. Have rain gear. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen. Again, this might have been the time of year that I hiked. Maybe I just shouldn't have hiked in June. But definitely have your rain pants, have your rain jacket, have everything that you need to keep yourself dry. Because I think it rained like every 12 hours or something. There's no 12 hour stretch where there's no rain, so that's cool. But blue sky today, finally, so happy. I was very lucky in that it usually rained at night, so I didn't have to hike in it that much. It was just like the second day and the very last day when it poured like crazy. So you know how it is. You've hiked before. Just be prepared for weather. Do not go up exposed peaks when it's going to be really bad weather. If you check the forecast and you know a storm's coming, if it is actively storming, if there are high winds and lightning, something like that, please don't go up exposed peaks. Um, people will have to come rescue you if something goes wrong. Uh, I don't want you to die up there. I um, say this because I did happen to go up Camel's Hump when I knew that there was a storm coming and um, it started to rain just before, just as I got to tree line, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't have that much farther because I'm right at tree line. I've just got to go up over the peak over the, down the other side. And let me tell you, the winds must have been, I'm no like meteorologist, but at least 40, 50 miles per hour, something like that, maybe higher. Probably higher because I couldn't stand up. I got to the peak and I was thrown to the ground and had to drag myself slash be dragged across the top of Camel's Hump. So it was scary and would not recommend. Um, there are other exposed peaks such as Mount Mansfield, which is the highest peak in Vermont. So just use caution, be careful. It does get rocky and scrambly at the top of some of these mountains. Shelters. Shelters are awesome on the long trail, especially after it splits from the AT. The shelters are really, really cool. Sometimes they're like little lodges with four walls. Four walls! We're all so used to the three walls. It's very exciting. There are some with wood stoves. There's some that just have really cool architecture. Um, some have windows and some have lofts. Just check out the shelters. I, I stayed in my tent almost every night on the AT. Um, so I was used to that mindset, like I'm going to be tenting, but I, I only ended up using my tent the first two nights on the LT because the, the shelters were so cool. Have gut hook. Please. I know some people are like not into their, they don't need GPS or whatever, they're navigating some other way, but um, gut hook, the GPS app, um, just get the, get the section for the long trail and it's not expensive. Um, and it really saved me a few times because sometimes it would be, you know, kind of like dark and it maybe it had just stormed and I couldn't see too well and I'd miss a couple of blazes. And there was one time I ended up almost just shooting up another mountain that I didn't even need to go up. It wasn't on the trail. Um, it was just like a blue blaze side trail. And I felt like something maybe was wrong and checked gut hook and sure enough, I was like 0.2 off the LT. So it really, it helps if you're like that. If, you, if you've if you never struggled with getting lost, very, very good for you, I'm happy for you, but it, it does happen to me sometimes. I manage to get lost on, on marked trails. So GPS just puts my mind at ease, especially because I started out um, the LT by myself and you know, it's just some peace of mind to know that you've, you've got something that knows where you are. Hit the trail early if you want to see wildlife. Now this is common knowledge, I guess, but 
Um, I'm pretty bad at getting up early and like packing up everything before eight or nine in the morning. Um, so the couple of times I did get up early, I saw some cool stuff. I saw a porcupine. So <laughs> you too could see a porcupine in Vermont. It was very thrilling. I really wanted to see moose though, and I saw tons of evidence of moose. I saw moose poop and I saw moose tracks and I never saw a moose, so I probably wasn't um, in the right place at the right time, but I hope you have good luck and see a moose and that it's a nice moose. Stop at this place called Barnes Camp Visitor Center. It's past the halfway point and they were so nice at this place. It's on the trail, like you're going to pass it, but stop there and hopefully they will have trail magic like they did for us. Oh, it was so wonderful and they had all kinds of snacks, just like bins of snacks. And they were very, very kind people and really helpful and encouraging. So that was just a nice experience. You're not um, as likely to get a ton of trail magic on the LT as you are on the AT. It's just not as well-traveled and I, but I really lucked out with some trail magic on the LT because I happened to be um, around kind of the bubble of the first AT hikers who set out from Springer and I met some of them and I got to partake in some of their trail magic. It was lovely. Here's one. I don't know if this is controversial. I'm just going to say I stopped in Rutland on the AT and on the LT and did not have a great time either time, so maybe maybe just avoid Rutland um, unless you really want to go to the Yellow Deli because they have very good food. Uh, but yeah, I had a, had a really hard time like hitching out of Rutland and just didn't, didn't enjoy the place itself, that's all I'll say. If you stop in Waterbury, which is around mile 184, stay at the old Stagecoach Inn if you can. I was going to just uh, stay in my tent or shelter every single night, never take a shower for three weeks, and I ended up, after the, the camel's hump debacle, going to stay at this inn and the breakfast. It was this endless breakfast and it was so good. I would go back there just for that. Um, just stunning, stunning breakfast. You, you can eat as much as you want. Just keep ordering off the menu. Uh, I truly hope you get to experience that. And I don't regret the shower that I had. It was good. Don't go past the Canada marker at the end of the trail. I hope I'm not the only one who did this. But when you get to the end of the long trail, you're going to see, this is again, if you're going northbound, you're going to see the big sign that is pretty much identical to the one that you saw at the beginning. And you'll think that's it. So I thought that was it. And I had seen p people with um, pictures of this, like, what do you call it? Obelisk? Monolith? I don't know. Um, the thing at the end where everybody gets their picture and they're like, I'm at the border of Canada. And I, I didn't see the thing. I was looking around for it. It was pouring rain at this point. It was completely drenched. I'd been running downhill for like an hour. And I just started hiking hiking down. Like, I guess that's it. I didn't, I didn't find the thing. Don't skip it. If you're at the sign that's the end of the long trail, look off to your left. It's like past a rock. I couldn't see it because it was completely, like everything was socked in. There was so much fog. Um, but it is there and don't miss it. It's really cool to stand on the border and know that you just hiked the entire length of Vermont. It's awesome. I have a few more things and they are from the founder of the trek, Zach Davis, also known as Badger. He wanted to give a few later season tips. So he hiked the LT um, during the month of September. So very different experience from June. He said that there were no bugs, just no bugs. Isn't that wonderful? So if you don't like black flies, don't go in June like I did. Zach said that it was totally fine in September. Um, he also said the mud was not nearly as bad as people warned him. He's, like I said, people are always talking about for mud, but apparently it was really like not even a distinguishing feature of the trail in September. Um, he said it did get slightly below freezing once or twice, but the days when it was like 80 degrees during the day, that was much more draining. See, I wanted to hike earlier in the year because, well, I thought like, it's almost summer, so it'll be warm and I'm from Florida and I can't handle really serious cold. So September to me seemed really terrifying because I was just having flashbacks to September on the AT when it was freezing every day. Um, but he said it wasn't bad. 
Uh, he finished September 23rd and the leaves were just starting to pop, so he wished that he had finished like the first week of October to really see um, more of that, the leaf peeping experience, if you will. And also, he wants you to know that the Mad Taco in Waitsfield is the best restaurant on the Long Trail, but that the Trek survey disagrees with that. So I think that really speaks to needing to hike your own hike and eat your own food and you know, you can take all of this advice from me, from anybody that's done the LT or any trail that you want to do, and it can sound like good advice, but maybe it doesn't work for you. So as always, please, please hike your own hike, enjoy yourself, get out there, have fun, and be safe. Okay, I really hope this helps somebody, um, and thanks for watching. Happy hiking!